My name is Nashilongo Gervashis, and I work in multiple platforms, but I think we'll stick to the one that Robert has introduced, which is being the director of Namchue Digital, which is a public interest social enterprise that works in technology policy, but also um, advising uh, the Namibia Internet Governance Forum Working Group. I think in moving forward, we just want to highlight um, particularly the topic that I'm supposed to be engaging with for this panel, um, which is really on infrastructure support for AI-driven elections uh, within the African countries and possibly share um, what would be the enabling um, factors towards that. So really, again, um, in terms of infrastructure uh, uh, support for AI-driven elections uh, within the African uh, continent. This is still very um, nascent, if we, if we may call it that way. And But ha there is some strides in, in terms of integrating technology within the electoral um, systems in, in, in some countries, of course, with varying degrees um, of, of such success. Um, really pausing here to see that some, some of the African countries have already started using the electoral voting machines as far as I think about 10 or even um, 9 to 8 years ago. So that could be considered or is considered some of the uh, infrastructures that African countries are investing or African countries have in place within their electoral uh, processes. So again... Uh, Possibly this year we're seeing further introductions of other um, forms of infrastructures, such as the biometric voters registration. Um, many of you who have gone through elections this year, you possibly went into a place, took your ID or your passport, um, and somebody sat there on a the system and were able to verify you and give you your card as, as, as it is. But also... Technology is also being employed within the electoral processes, which includes, again, biometric systems for voters registration, further utilization of digital systems for voter registration and the use of AI applications for monitoring election um, processes and prevention of frauds. Um, uh, also, investments in biometric technology for elections, um, which is, while not fully uh, maybe AI driven many countries or exploring the potential of AI improving efficiency, but also transparency in electoral processes. I mean, if you remember in many of the African countries, maybe 10 or so years ago, you would walk into your electoral commission office and there'll be a large printed, like a register of who are the people that have registered for elections, you would find somebody who have died a number of years ago would still be appearing on those systems, right? That's because it was very manual and possibly uh, detections, for instance, in, in that case would have not been easy to, to integrate. But also now with the integration of different systems, say your death register, your ID register, and, and your voters registration, you one would be able to to pick that up or within these systems integration, that would make it um, very easy for making sure that the accuracy of information that um, the system contains. With, within the infrastructure, I think we could really, again, re-engage um, those many aspects there as a need for integration for, of infrastructure, the different infrastructures that uh, many nations have in place. But also, I think a challenging issue here within the integration is really, again, where these many systems come from, you know, from, from, from your EVMs, from your electronic voters' uh, identifications, from your biometrics collection uh, systems that many of them are not even, you know, don't, don't look alike, for instance, don't necessarily collect the, the same data. And that makes it anyway still very challenging for many um, of the African continents. Again, in reflection, I had a slide here on the investments by governments on AI infrastructure um, globally. 
And you, if you look at uh, that slide, you really see how African governments are behind or lagging behind in terms of the investment into, in the development of AI within their own countries. We see, obviously, AI tools being developed by corporate um, companies within the African continent. But w the moment we see that corporate Africa, um, for instance, is investing in products on the AI technologies that directly contributes to their, you know, to their cash flows or to the bank balances within the African continent and not necessarily doing too much in terms of making sure that um, they are aligned to making sure of issues of transparency and the principles that my colleagues have already mentioned. So before I move to engage on issues of regulations and why it's important part of the infrastructure development is also to look at the policies. And I think this is a graphic that is from the Lawyers Hub data that's nearest 2023, really again highlighting those issues, right? So we have about nine countries that has some AI policies and strategies. And even within those 53 countries, we still have only 36 who have passed the data protection law, which is the most important law that deals with personal data. I mean, if you look at elections, it's, it's about people's data, right? And the day people's data is the one that is required and is necessitated for, for fueling the AI systems and making sure that they are working, they're functioning, and they can produce the results that we need. So we still have those many disparities, those many challenges that one, there's obviously lack of investment within the AI systems. Most importantly, AI systems that are produced on the African continent, if there's any, that the systems that we are using, such as the electronic um, voter systems and, and other biometrics, are uh, produced elsewhere. We have bought them and using them within our, uh, our countries. I remember in some of the countries you have your Ministry of, of, of Home Affairs that will issue you your death certificate, your birth certificate, and, and that is very core to, you know, consequently issues of dealing with, um, you know, e elections and that kind of verification. You will have seven or more systems that do not even talk to each other, right? So those infrastructures are good to have. We are having them, but are they being effective in a way that they can power these systems and making sure that these, these systems are, are transparent, they're effective, and consequently elections um, can be seen to be fair because if you are doubting whether the electoral register that, that is provided to you has deceased people or has unalived people, people, um, then, then, then the issues of integrity of uh, elections and the core of democracy is, is key within the electoral processes questions. So policy, again, very, very key. I think uh, many of my, my colleagues earlier have, have uh, alluded to the AU um, and the NEPA white paper or many of the engagements that are, that are being happening at the African level. A key is this AUDA and NEPAD white paper on regulations and responsible adoption of AI uh, in Africa um, towards the achievement of the AU agenda. So most importantly here is just really to indicate that to govern the use of AI in democratic elections, African nations need to develop comprehensive legal and regulatory framework that addresses a number of key areas. One is the data protection and privacy, and I've alluded to this already, that there's transparency and accountability in the use of election, and that should be very clear in terms of accountability mechanisms. But also key within the regulatory framework is issues of biasness and fairness, right? And that AI systems obviously can perpetuate and exacerbate um, biases if not properly designed. I don't know, I think uh, one of my colleagues must have mentioned issues of, of cyber security already, that in elections, there's a high risk of cyber attacks, right? And hence, our legal framework should be mandated strong cyber security measures to protect AI system from being uh, compromised. That's even if you have a cyber security um, framework within you within your country. So imagine if you are if you live in a country where there is no cyber security law. Again, reflecting that only thirty six African countries have 
have passed data protection laws. So we have so many, so many of those challenges and they stem from a lack of harmonization and, and really, again, um, making sure that we adopt, for instance, the Malabo Convention and that forces us that they, they ought to be, uh, these are the key elements that African countries within their policy formations processes must look like that. Again, international cooperation and harmonization with the African region seems to still be on, on some sort of receiving end, right? For as, for as long as we're not, one, producing systems, and two, when we adopt these systems, they do not give us channels or processes for accountability, for instance. Cooperation really might not necessarily benefit the African region, right? Um, harmonization is very key. Again, could also be a challenge in a region where democracy itself and even elections itself looks very, very different in 50, 54, 53 um, African countries, right? 